hearts and their labor. We want to remember also to pray for Pastor Greg and Lisa Mitchell uh, for God's grace over their leadership and their ministry. Pastor Harold and Mona Warner, we pray for them for healing and recovery from every infirmity, the Tucson Church and all the extended ministries. Uh, let's also add to our prayer list this morning, Joe and Connie Campbell and Chandler. I just returned from preaching at that conference this last week, uh, and I was also able to preach at the San Antonio Conference, Richard and Yolanda Ruby. Uh, uh, I think between those two conferences, Pastor Mark Olson's conference in Tempe, Arizona, and the conference in uh, London, uh, this last week, uh, something in the neighborhood of 50 churches have been planted. Uh, that's on the heels of Pastor Mitchell going to be with Jesus. Uh, we're going to continue on continuing on. And so let's thank God for that great uh, victory report. We also want to remember some of our outreach pastors and missionaries, Abel and Tina Pasillas uh, in Horizon City, Isaac and Doris Cortez in San Marcos, uh, Texas, Ramon and Patty Juarez in Mexico City, Caleb and Brenda Melendez uh, in Juarez, uh, Mexico. We want to pray salvation for Joe Lopez, Carlos and Alex uh, Aguirre, Juan Gonzalez, Norma Diaz, uh, uh, that's her son, Albert Vega, Michael Cordova, Rebecca Lara, Gabby Castaneda, uh, the Ransdell and Marcus families, Veronica Wiggins, uh, Consti, Angel Gonzalez, uh, the Burgess family, Maria Neg Negishi, uh, the Abs and Robinson families, Carmen Moreno and Gracelia Hara. Those are all people we're praying for for salvation. Uh, the Hankins family, Christine and Valerie, Damian Gonzalez, uh, uh, Nancy Singlin, these are all we're praying for for healing. Maria and Eugene Jones. Uh, uh, Kathy uh, is a little baby that has a serious infection. We're praying for a miracle. Uh, Erica uh, Pimentel. Uh, uh, Lorena Valdez has cancer. Michael Medrano, Lucy Robinson, Esther Abs, Elaine Reed, George Martinez. Uh, also has cancer. We're believing God for a miracle. Uh, and Lanny Garcia, Gloria Garcia, those are both for healing. Cindy Peralta, the Villanueva family. Uh, we're praying for the church in Cuba. Looks like uh, Angel and Bernadette and children will be able to go back this month. Uh, they're having their first uh, opening, so it's a grand opening of uh, coming back from all the COVID restrictions there in Cuba. So let's pray for miracle power there. Uh, Petra, Macias, Daniel Burgess, Oscar Garcia, those are all for special needs. Again, let's emphasize the services this morning and tonight. We need miracles. We need healing. We need deliverance. Uh, we need salvation. Backsliders need to be redeemed. Uh, let's, let's cry out to God. The Bible says when we do so, he will intervene and heal the land. So let's cry out to God. Let's pray together. And as we subside, Pastor Mike uh, is going to come and open our service in prayer. Let's go before the Lord. Lift up your voice. Let's cry out to God. Father, we thank you so much for the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Uh, Lord, have liberty and right of way so that your will and your purpose. Oh, dear God, we love you, God. We thank you for the privileged opportunity to gather one with another. God, we're contending and believing for miracles, signs, wonders, and your mighty deeds to be made manifest, God. We're asking for you to pour out your spirit, Lord God. Anoint your messenger and your truth and revelation to our hearts today, Lord God. We believe you for conversions. We believe you for healings. And we believe you for miracles, Lord God. We lift up every one of these needs, spoken and unspoken, before your throne. Captivate every heart. Let us not leave here the same, but change to bring all glory, all praise, and all thanks to you, leaving more in your image and likeness as we lay this service at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Greet one another as you're being seated. Thank God for the presence of the Lord. Great anticipation in the church today. Welcome uh, to everyone who's live streaming. We appreciate your faithfulness as well. And I want to make just a couple of announcements regarding uh, that. Uh, we are continuing to live stream, but uh, because we've opened up all of our children's ministries, there is more room uh, in the sanctuary. We're spread out a little more. We have our mask-mandated uh, fellowship hall. 
that can also be utilized. So we encourage you, if you are live streaming, uh, uh, that should be winding down, coming to an end. We encourage everyone to come to church, although we are going to continue it uh, for a little while longer. So uh, thank you. And then uh, uh, we've had, because it's October 1st, or the beginning of October, uh, this is uh, traditionally the beginning of flu season. So we've had a few people who have contracted the flu, and they thought they had COVID, but they didn't. They, they got the flu. Some of the symptoms are similar. You might get body aches and uh, temperature and lightheadedness and so forth. Uh, and so you think you have COVID, uh, but you don't. So what we recommend is that if you feel any symptoms, uh, uh, even if someone in your family has gotten the flu, uh, been tested negative for COVID, uh, and then you get the symptoms, we recommend that you do get tested. Don't just assume that it's the flu. That could be a catastrophic mistake. Uh, so uh, don't think automatically if you have symptoms you have COVID because in a lot of cases you won't. We've had a few people, as I said, uh, just this last week feel sick, tested, negative for COVID, and it's just the flu. That's the season we're in, so don't panic. Uh, the likelihood is that you don't have COVID, you have the flu. We've been fairly lightly uh, hit in our church, and we're thanking God for that as far as COVID is concerned. We've had, in the past uh, years, we've had uh, the flu run through the church, uh, and again, we recommend that if you have a fever, uh, if you can discern that your children are contagious, that you don't bring them uh, to church if they have the flu. So uh, just be aware of that. Amen. So uh, we want to welcome everyone out this morning. We're so glad to be gathered together. We're looking forward to a great series of revival services. This is our first revival since uh, uh, January. We had Jerry Fussell last January. It seems like we can't even, it might, it might as well have been 10 years ago. Uh, we've had a few revival Sundays, we've had our conference, a lot of things have happened between now and then, uh, but part of getting back to the normal function of our church uh, is having a good old-fashioned revival, and so we're glad for that. So uh, we're welcoming everyone here today, live streaming in person, uh, and we're thanking God. Let's give everybody a very, very warm welcome. We want to mention just a few announcements. We, of course, will be having a uh, service tonight, revival services with evangelist Chris Hart. Uh, we pray at 9, at 5.30, rather, 5.30 prayer this afternoon. That'll be here in the main sanctuary. Uh, and if you want to wear a mask, you can pray in the fellowship hall. So let's have a full house. Let's gather together early to pray, lay hold of God. This really does make a difference uh, in the quality of the services. When I was growing up in the Lord, uh, shortly after I got saved, I began to go to prayer meeting, uh, and it became part of what it meant to be in church. We didn't just show up on time for church or a little bit late, uh, thinking, well, we're here for church. Uh, we, we had to be in prayer, and so a lot of times it meant uh, rushing home from work, getting ready quickly, getting the children dressed and ready, and getting there for prayer. So we need a good group of people that takes the prayer meeting before the service uh, seriously, and you come and join and lay hold of God with us. And then I want to challenge you and encourage you to plan on being in every service tonight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll be better for it. Uh, God wants to express and manifest his power, and there's nothing more important than that. I can't fathom saying, well, I've got to do this, or I've got to do that, or I'd be better off doing this instead of coming to church. Uh, I don't think that way, uh, and I hope that you don't. So, uh, let's gather together each night. The service is at six, 7, and we have prayer meeting at 6. That's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Tonight on Sunday night, prayer meeting is at 5.30, service at 6.30. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then uh, this coming Friday, uh, Bible study are off, and we will be having youth uh, here at the church in person as all of our ministries except Bible studies uh, are all in person now. Uh, so that's the schedule. Uh, next Saturday we'll be having our EDGE here in the building, prayer meeting of course every Saturday morning and outreach following. We encourage you to come and be part of that. There will be an ushers meeting immediately after the morning service uh, in the serious men's class and then uh, on the 25th, which I think is maybe two weeks from now, uh, 
There will be a water baptism. Uh, please see Ernie Lopez, Pastor Ernie, if you have any questions about that. And then our Sunday school, you shouldn't be missing these. If you don't go to Sunday school regularly, you should come to these. You'll get educated. The things that you're going to hear in our Sunday schools, you may not hear anywhere else. It's, it's crucial and vital information. And uh, I was blown away with how Ernie presented it this morning. There's tremendous anointing. And again, we're living in such a critical hour uh, as he's been teaching and ministering concerning uh, the election that's upcoming. So uh, be in prayer about that and uh, consider uh, participating uh, in that. Amen. Let's uh, take the offering. Amen. We want to worship the Lord with our finances, our wealth, our resources. Giving is such a vital part of the biblical narrative. It actually began instinctually as people like Noah, before him, Abel, even Cain, had an instinct that he needed to give something and make a sacrifice to God. You can't just live for God and benefit from his presence in your life uh, without giving something back. Abraham uh, paid tithes uh, before it was ever initiated by God. He did that by revelation, by spiritual instinct. Uh, and then, of course, all throughout the Old Testament, uh, the idea of bringing an offering and making a sacrifice is very uh, powerfully, intrinsically embedded in what it means uh, to be a believer in God, a servant of the Lord. And then, of course, the New Testament advances that and uh, we want to challenge you today. The part of the fuel, we depend on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We depend on God's presence, of course. Uh, you can refer to that as the fuel that energizes us spiritually. Uh, but the fuel that energizes world evangelism is that. But it's also your giving and your generosity and your liberality. We want you to be praying for Nick and Michelle and their daughters as they're going to be leaving for Cambodia this coming Thursday. Uh, we're going to be able to make the transition into Colombia and the transition from Bolivia into Juarez and the transition back into Bolivia uh, for a couple to take over that church. Uh, we're going to be able to do all of that within the next few weeks. So, uh, it's not possible without your liberality, uh, without your generosity and your giving. Uh, we're challenging you if you have any outstanding uh, pledges left over from conference, world evangelism pledges, uh, that you do your very, very best to pay those uh, by the end of October so that we can move on to other things that we're going to be challenging you for uh, before the end of this year. So let's bow our heads. Uh, we want to pray God's blessing over your finances, uh, your needs being met, the promises of God being fulfilled in your life so that you can, so that you have abundance to give back uh, and, and fuel world evangelism, fuel the needs uh, of our local church and our congregation uh, meeting all the needs. Father, we thank you for the grace of God uh, that is abundant and sufficient to meet every need, Lord. Uh, I pray for those right now that may need employment or they have financial needs that even this week you would supernaturally intervene on their behalf uh, and make every provision and we thank you Lord for the jobs that we have the resources that are flowing into the hands of the righteous uh, we honor you for that because you're the source uh, of the flow of the flow of wealth and resources into our hands uh, Lord I pray liberality this morning obedience and faith to be released into this offering uh, and I pray your blessing on the offering and let it go to further the cause of Jesus Christ uh, all around the world, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And all God's people said, all right, let's sing and worship God as we give this morning. I've got my mind made up to serve the Lord. I've got my mind made up to serve the Lord.
Amen. Most everyone knows the drill. If you're going to give uh, via text, via our website, or via our app, but if you don't, you can uh, either text. You saw the uh, information on the screen. Uh, we encourage you to give that way uh, if you choose to do so. Amen. We are so glad to be getting back into the flow of what we might call normal, but uh, nothing is normal in the kingdom of God. We refer to our services sometimes as, uh, you know, we'll be having a regular service tonight or Wednesday, but we don't want them to be regular. We want them to be unpredictable, uh, irregular, because we're depending on the supernatural hand of God to work on our behalf. Uh, that will begin this morning with our brother coming to minister, evangelist Chris Hart, uh, who has already begun the process of becoming a great friend uh, of our church here in El Paso. He's preaching this week. We're going to be scheduling him in the future as well to come back and bring us the Word of God. I want to really encourage you uh, to do everything you can to remain right where you are, in place, without having to get up uh, during the course of the service. You're not going to want to miss a single syllable of any sermon. And in order to get up and walk out, you kind of have to detach yourself, uh, and it's very hard to reconnect. Something very powerful and spiritual occurs uh, when the Word of God is being ministered, and we need to sit still and and open our hearts, uh, and then when he says heads bowed, uh, again, let's let's not get up in mass and walk out of the building. You can uh, hold yourself uh, uh, because heads bowed meaning means things are really going to get started now. Amen. That's when God visits us, meets with us, uh, and and does a work at the altar. So, uh, with all that in mind, Amen. We are going to introduce Chris. He did did a great job in our serious men's class this morning. He's been evangelizing now out of Prescott for many, many years. He's a genuine, real, gifted by God evangelist, and he's going to bring it to us this morning. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Great privilege to be here again this morning. I am grateful for the invitation to be with you and to be able to preach the gospel. It is the message of hope. And we're believing with you this morning that God's going to meet with us, that the power of God revealed in signs and wonders is the power of God revealed in signs and wonders. And I'm believing for you this morning that you would contend and pray, expecting, expecting, and expecting. We do need God to show up in every service. I uh, am not a performer. I don't have it. But when God shows up, in my weakness, he is strong. And so I thank God for the word that lives. If you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 15. Thank you, Pastor, for the invitation to come. I'm honored to be here. Genesis chapter 15. I want, to message, I want to preach a message that I have entitled Contending because if this is not something that we do as an individual, a group, if we do not contend for God's promises, the fulfillment of God's promises, we will not enter into the fullness of what God has for us. And so I want to declare this message to you this morning contending in the obscure waters of Canada and Alaska the life of the king salmon begins as it grows and develops it then swims into the streams the rivers the lakes ultimately into the ocean where it will spend most of its life in its instincts, it will know that it needs to return back to the place of its birth or the place of origin. To do so, it will have to contend with the current, the obstacles, the predators. And then return back to the place 
of origin or the place of birth. In relation to the believer this morning, salvation begins in an obscure place where God meets with an individual, with a man or with a woman. At that time, there is a conversion, a miracle that transpires. In the infancy of an individual's faith, there will be those moments word will sustain us, yes, but there will be those challenges. From the pulpit, pastor will declare the word of God. And then in the instincts of that new believer, a decision will be made, and that is, I am going to be faithful to church. Then as the individual continues, There will be those moments at the altar where again the person will have an encounter with a Holy Spirit, with the holiness of God. And at that moment again, something will be triggered in that person. A desire, a passion to pray without ceasing. This will be something that transforms the individual. Then again, there will be those moments as pastor preaches, the minister declares the word of God from the pulpit, the word of God living will begin to trigger in that person the call of God, the ministry, the very thing that God knew you in your mother's womb for. This will begin to become a reality. God will challenge you to persevere, to passionately pursue. It will also be in meetings like this where there's a revival that you receive from the man of God. A word, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a prophetic word. And when you receive That word, you will have a responsibility. It's not magic. But God expects you to pursue. God expects you to contend. God expects you to believe. And I declare to you this morning, in this message, that God is faithful because He is a God of covenant promise. Can you say amen? Looking at the Scripture... Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram, I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring, indeed one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the earth of the Chaldeans to give you the land to inherit it. And he said, Lord... Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him, cut them in two down the middle, and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror And great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. Verse 17, And it came to pass, when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, there appeared a smoking oven, a burning torch, that passed between those pieces. On the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram. God, we thank you that you are a covenant making covenant keeping God we are grateful for this audience this host of people who have come 
expecting you to show up. For we need you to show up, Lord. The anointing of the, the yoke that break, the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage this morning. We're expecting. We're believing for you to redeem and set people free. And all God's people said, Amen. I want to look first of all at the storm. Now here in the scripture it says, Abram received a word from God. And in this word, God said, I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. In this response, we find that God shows himself or reveals himself in a vision. Now, visions can be positive or they can be negative. In the battle, in the warfare, in the storm, we see two key components. The perfect storm in Abram's life, barrenness, fear. And this is what God wants to speak to. Wants to help Abram work through the difficulty, the experience, the storm that he is going in, going through. The vision or the mental image is very real. There are people here this morning. There are storms that you're going through. Circumstances. Things that are very real. And they have with them these mental images. These things that are real in your mind. The struggle. It may be barrenness. It can be fear. Whatever it is for you, it may be relational. It may be physical, mental, spiritual. It's real. And it's a storm in your life. In Matthew chapter 8, we find Jesus. He is with the disciples there in a boat upon the sea. A storm arises. The waves begin to overwhelm the boat, the wind. These seasoned fishermen, they're filled with fear. They cry out to Jesus, Jesus, save us. He awakens from a nap. And he speaks. He says, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? He speaks to the storm, and immediately there is a great calm. This is what God is doing here in Abram's life. A storm, an intensity in the storm. And he speaks, he says, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. That's what he wants to do this week in our lives. There are people here, the intensity of the storm. You're thinking, I don't know if I can get through this. This has caused you pain. It has assaulted your faith. And the struggle is very real. I want to look secondly at the gift. The word of God for your life and my life is a gift. A promise. A shield. An exceeding great reward. And it is here God speaks personally to Abram, a word in season. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we find that God gives gifts to men. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, discerning of spirits, faith, healing. These are an essential part of the ministry. And God has given gifts to men so that He can dispense His promises. 
through that instrument, that servant, that individual, that vessel. God has given to us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to dispense these gifts, to declare them into your life. And here in the scripture, we find two examples. One, the word of knowledge. Two, the word of wisdom. Notice that Abram makes his appeal. He says in verse 2, What will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? God's response gives us an example of the word of knowledge. Look. God then says, Eleazar of Damascus is not your heir. Your heir will come from your own body. So here is a picture or an example of the word of knowledge. First, it's specific. It speaks directly to Abram's appeal to his need in his life. He and his wife are barren. This is very real. They've lived with this for years. He had received a word from God in Genesis chapter 13. I'm going to give you descendants like the sand upon the seashore. But yet, there are no children. This is a reality. This is the struggle. And now God says, specifically, I'm going to give you your own descendants. It's going to come from your own body. The second thing we see in the word of knowledge is that it's current. The word of knowledge current. When you receive the true word of knowledge, you will find that the word of knowledge will always speak to you about current issues. What you're going through right now. And this is what God does to calm the storm that's raging in Abram's life. The second thing is the word of wisdom. He then directs Abram, Abram, count the stars. Count them. And again, God has already made him a promise. You're going to have children like the sand upon the seashores. Then again, we see God giving him a glimpse of a promise, yes. But even more amplified because scientists have said that there's more stars in the heavens than there is sand upon the seashore. And God says, count the stars, Abram. And just counts the stars. God, the God who knows the beginning from the end, is looking into the future, into other constellations. He looks into this assembly this morning, at that very moment, the spiritual descendants of Abraham, you and I, he saw us sitting here. Is that me? He saw us sitting here, and he said, these people... I'm making a promise to every single one of them because you are the spiritual descendants of Abraham. Giving an Abraham a glimpse of the future. My wife, Paul and I were attending a conference in Gallup, New Mexico. Still disciples in the mother church. And we're conversing, we're talking about the future. We've already been to several seminars, services, we're stirred. And I told Paula on the way to service, to the seminars that morning, I said, Paula, if God will help us, I will go anywhere. 
I will do anything. That morning, sitting in an audience of several hundred people, Glenn Gluck's preaching. He points out into the audience, specifically at me, and he says, glory to God. <laughs> Thank God for sound, man. Appreciate him. Praise God. Am I, uh, we're tightened up. Hallelujah. Feel better now. Glory to God. They've got a tough job. <laughs> He said, brother, you told God you would go anywhere, you would do anything, God's going to take you up on it. And I knew at that moment God had something for me in the future. I didn't know what, but God gave me a glimpse over the fence. He said, you've got something, God's got something for you. And this is a picture of the word of wisdom that God helps us to see what we can't on our own. It gives us a glimpse of the future. Notice what Abram did. It says, first of all, that he believed. When you receive a word from God, God is watching. He believed God accounted it to him for righteousness. That means that God not only is watching, but there is an accounting. He cares how you and I respond to those promises that God has given us. When you receive a word from God, however again it's dispensed, God watches, He cares. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and He believed. The second thing that happens is again, God speaks. And he says to that faith, to that belief, I am the God that brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans to inherit this land. So here again is a challenge. There will always be a challenge from God. When we believe God wants to direct us. He wants to direct you and I this week in prayer. He wants to direct you and I to believe in this great assembly. God has many promises. He is directing His people. There is a challenge for you and I this morning to arise. To believe for the moment, but also to believe for the future. I am the God who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans. And then, Abram says, What would you have me to do, Lord? Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a dove, and a pigeon. He brought these things and immediately began to lay them upon an altar. There again, God speaks to you and I because in Romans chapter 12 it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is it when we begin to yield our life to an altar. It's at those moments again that the word of God, the whole counsel of God, the word of God counsels. The word of God convicts. 
and the word of God comforts. And it's when the whole counsel of God is declared, something begins to move. There is a supernatural demonstration. God begins to challenge the person, the individual to come to this place. God made you a promise. God has made you promises. And he challenges you to come to this place where again you surrender your life as a living sacrifice. Abram, I'm going to give you this land to inherit it. And it's God's inheritance, beloved. God expects us to yield ourselves and believe for the inheritance that He has promised us as a living sacrifice. There is in conclusion... Two supernatural responses I want to look at. First, notice that the vultures came. When you surrender, when you submit your life as a living sacrifice, Satan takes notice as well. For again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against host of darkness. These hosts of darkness, they traffic in a supernatural dimension, a heavenly dimension. And here we find in our scripture an illustration of this, an assault against the sacrifice. The enemy intends to molest, come against, destroy, and we are challenged to, to not forget the enemy's devices because there will be those times that he uses those devices, these intended methods, these devices, the weaponry that the enemy chooses to use against you. He begins to use propaganda. He uses accusation. He devises these strategies to entice you. He comes to torment. He comes to molest the living sacrifice, your life and mine. The second thing that happens in relation to the demonic, the Bible says a darkness and a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Again, a message. And that is the enemy has come to wear out the saints of the Most High God. There are times that weariness a weariness that's unusual. There are people here this morning who have been experiencing this weariness. It's unusual. And then when you lay down, you can't rest. It's unusual. It's demonic. And what it's come to do is to wear you and I out so that we will no longer contend. That we will begin to retreat and back off, not pursue the promises of God. Here this morning, there are numbers of people who have been struggling in this arena. We're living in the last days. And I assure you, Hell co-ops together, principalities and powers, these places, these war rooms where hell comes together and begins to strategize against the church. This whole thing about us gathering together, this is a strategy directly from hell. We're the church of God. We have been designed by God to conquer, to take the land. And this is what the enemy is strategizing against church. And there is a weariness upon God's people because the devil has come to worry. He's come to deceive. 
But thank God in our text, God supernaturally responds. And it's at this moment that the scripture says a smoking oven and a torch pass over the sacrifice. Here the smoking oven is diffusing a smoke, declaring the reality of a future affliction. But in that affliction, no matter what we are going through, there is this reminder of the torch. The torch reminds us of the fact that God is a lamp unto our feet and a guide upon our path. The reality this morning of His presence, His abiding presence, His participation, When we pray, when we worship, when we preach and believe, there is again the promise of God's Word, the declaration even this morning in Sunday school, the reality of who we are and the responsibility that we have for we are that lamp. We are those individuals this morning. God has given us a God has given us the power to prevail. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We have been given the power to prevail. God will always honor His covenant. Several years after I had received, in fact, I believe it was eight years after I'd received that word from Glenn Cluck. That Pastor Payne, he comes to me and he says, Chris, I want to plant you. Where do you want to go? I said, I want to go to Kayenta, Arizona. Where? Kayenta, Arizona. The Navajo Nation. And I'm telling you, if you've ever been to Kayenta, it's like the moon. So we are preparing. He says, well, there's four things that I want to see happen if I'm going to send you and your family to Kayenta. First, you need a home. Secondly, you need a church building. Thirdly, you need a job. And fourthly, I'm very concerned about the schooling, your children's schooling, except especially Caleb the special needs program there. So I pray, man, I'm saying, God, I need your help. Because I didn't have any of those. So I prayed, God, I need a home. That morning after prayer, I went to this place called High Country Mobile Homes. Sitting across the desk from the owner, a backslidden Christian, And I'm speaking to him, saying, listen, I want to go pioneer on the Navajo Reservation. Do you have any used homes, anything really inexpensive? I didn't have a a dime. Inexpensive that we could purchase and take to the reservation. He then said, I have a 16 by 80 Liberty mobile home. You know how salesmen are. They always want to sell you stuff you don't need. 16 by 80, Liberty Mobile Home. He says, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you that home. It's brand new. It's only been lived in a few months. It's a brand new home. He says, I'm going to give that to you. Not only am I going to give that to you, I'm going to move that out there for free. Three days before I came in, God had spoken to this man and said, there's someone coming in I want you to give that home to. I was the man. Now when Glenn Cluck gave me that word, I had no idea. God gave me a glimpse over the fence, but I didn't see the mobile home. But God did. The God who knows the beginning from the end. He saw it. Say, oh, I can't wait to give that to them if they'll just keep believing. Now I need a church building. So I thought, well, 
this old boy's got a lot of used double-wide mobile homes. I wonder if he'd sell one to me. So I went in, I asked him, I said, listen, would you sell one of those big double-wides for, to me so, so we could have a church building? He said, go around, go look around. I went out and found the biggest one I could find. I said, what about this one? He said, I'm going to give that to you too. Not only am I going to give that to you, I'm going to move it out there for free. Now, when Glenn Cluck gave me that word, I had no idea that God was going to give me a church building. But God did. I'm just stretching to see the stars in the heavens. God said, oh, wait till you see your first church building. Now I'm there in Kayenta. I need a place to move it. You have mission site leases. They... It's complicated out there. So, I'm looking around for a mission site lease. Guess what? I find the old potter's house that was abandoned in 1990. I said, wow, I wonder if that guy would rent it to me. He had left the fellowship. I thought, well, he probably doesn't want to talk to me, but it's worth the call. So I found out who he was. I called him. I said, listen, I'm so-and-so from the door in Farmington. I'm starting a church there in Kayenta. Would you be willing to rent that building to me? He says, I'll give it to you. I called Pastor Payne. He said, can you get it in writing? <laughs> <laughs> so I did. The guy signed the building, the church building, over to us. Hallelujah. Now when I got that word from Glenn Clark, I had no idea the goodness of God, what he was preparing for us to do his will there in Kayenta. Had no idea, but God did. I needed a job. I went to the Holiday Inn there in Kayenta, and I was applying for a job. Because of Navajo preference, there was no way I'd get that job. But as I'm walking out of the building, I noticed, I think that's where we ate, Pastor. When I'm walking out of the building, I noticed the building was really in bad shape, dilapidated, things needed to be fixed. This is a Holiday Inn. So I went back in, spoke to the manager. I said, listen, would you be willing to hire me to fix up your building, to paint it? And do that? He says, you know, we're taking bids for that right now. I said, would you take one from me? He said, absolutely. So I worked up a number, $19,000. He supplied all the materials. There was another at 30, but this guy was bringing people from out of town. I'm there. I wouldn't have to pay for their food, their lodging. And so they told me, he said, well, we've looked at your bid, and we're going to go ahead and just give you the, the job, $19,000. I'm in the middle of Zarapath. It's 70% unemployment. The widow of Zarephath lives there. $19,000 where there are no jobs. Then a man by the name of Dick DeRozier, who works or worked for Holiday Inn, comes out. And he begins to walk around the property and he starts handing me change orders. That bid went from $19,000 to $73,000. And I did it in 19 weeks. Now when I got that word from Glenn Cluck, I had no idea that God was going to meet my needs according to his riches in glory. And after the first year, Caleb receives an award. And it was for being the most popular kid in the entire school. God gave us all four. Aren't you thankful? Because he's a covenant 
keeping God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Heads bowed, eyes closed. You're here. This morning you're not saved. You're not born again. Jesus, the way. Jesus, the truth and the life. He's here this morning to meet with you. He says, I desire that none perish, that all make heaven their home. You're here this morning and you've not been saved. You've not been born again. Listen, Jesus went to the cross for you. No greater love than this, than one to lay down his life, their life for someone else. That's what Jesus did. He says, I give my life for you. And then he says, you choose. You choose whom you will serve. Here is my salvation. It's a gift. Receive it. And this morning you would say, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to receive Christ in my life. I'm not born again. Thank you for that hand back there. Anyone else? You want to give your life to Jesus? You're not saved. You're not born again. You would lift your hand and say yes to Jesus Christ. Here's my hand. Thank you for that hand. God bless you. Anyone else? There's others. Jesus is moving because he loves you. He wants you to be saved. But you have to acknowledge your need by raising your hand. Say, pray for me too, preacher. Here's my hand. Please pray for me. I know I need to receive Christ as my Savior. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Thank you for this hand. Anyone else? Others this morning. Thank you for that hand. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Who else this morning? You would lift your hand. Say, please pray for me too, preacher. Please pray for me. I'm not saved. Thank you for these hands. Anyone else? Lift it up. Yes, in Jesus' name. Backslider. Jesus is dealing with you. Dealing with you. Please don't leave this place like you came. There's forgiveness in Jesus' name. Online, there's people. You're not saved. Jesus Christ is dealing with you. You would lift your hand right where you're at. In the overflow room, you would lift your hand right where you're at. Those of you who lifted your hand in the main sanctuary here, stand to your feet quickly. Stand to your feet real quick, quick, quick. Stand to your feet, please. Stand to your feet very quickly. We're going to pray with you, please, in the back. Yes, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, numbers of you. Yes, right here, right here. Right here, right here, back here in the back, yes. I want to ask you to come and meet us at the altar right now. You're going to kneel down here and simply pray a sinner's prayer. Come, please, come. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray a simple prayer. Dear in the back, would you come? Yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, as they're coming. 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 Jesus name thank God for these honest hearts those of you online you lifted your hand in the overflow room I want to pray a simple prayer with you would you please repeat after me Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner and that you shed your blood for me Right now, I repent of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me. To come into my heart to be my personal Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Changing the order, the appeal to the service here this morning. God's people, God's challenging you. I'm asking you to come. There are people, you've received words from God. However it was dispensed, it was from God. And God's asking you this morning, are you believing? Are you contending? Those of us who have been in the fight, the fight's real. We need a supernatural breakthrough. I assure you, God is a God of covenant. He is faithful. He will bring his promises to pass 
Would you stand with me this morning? I'm asking you to come to the altar. Do business with God. Do business with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word of God that sets us free. Hallelujah. He is Lord. Yes, he is. He is Lord. And he has risen. stand with us this morning covenant keeping God is faithful in relation to his promises my brother I want to tell you something there is a challenge in your life you have experienced it before but yet there is this apprehension and God wants me to counsel you and charge you to make steps of faith at this time, to overcome the apprehension. Because God wants to take you into a new dimension. A new dimension. And if you will believe Him and assert yourself in this reality, I assure you that you will enter into this new place. And in this new place, a greater dimension of God. And you will find that in the pursuit of this reality in your life, God will give you what you don't have. Can you say amen? Give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there has been a weariness in your life. And in that weariness, there has been some concerns, wondering. And in that, the enemy has used accusation. He continues to try to convince you that something's wrong. And this is where the enemy comes in and assaults your faith. This is what God wants me to encourage you to do. Remember his promises. They're never, they're never going to change. God has made you promises of, and he will keep them. The covenant that he has made with you. The enemies, the liar. God doesn't play games with us. He's faithful. To bring it to pass. Can you give God praise? Thank you, Jesus. You know, brother, 
God wants to do a miracle. There are a number of things that happen primarily in a relationship. In that relationship, a betrayal. In that betrayal, a bondage. In that bondage, the enemy continues to confuse you. And I'm going to tell you something. God is here this morning to break the chains that bind you. There's power here this morning in Jesus' name to break the strongholds in your life and to help you to overcome what you cannot on your own. There have been those moments when anger has begun to rage and that anger is the enemy's way of keeping you in bondage. Listen to me. God wants to set you free this morning. Set you free. Set you free. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Being built up in the faith. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. You've been worried. Worried. And the worry has brought a weariness. And the weariness has brought a retreat. God knows what's happened. But God counsels me to counsel you. And say, fight like you've never fought before. And remember what you gave me at the altar. Because you gave it to me. You can't have it back. He said, you gave it all to me. You can't have it back. Fight like you've never fought before. The God of promise will bring to pass the breakthrough. I said, you'll bring it to pass. Give God praise. You were in a conversation with a person. You've had conversations before with this individual. And it's always like they attack you over the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And it's in the attack that you wonder, because it's in the attack that the voice of the enemy is amplified. What God wants me to tell you is don't listen. You know what to do. God spoke to you. Don't listen because the words are covered and the deceit is real and the enemy's intentions are to destroy, to pull you back into what God set you free from. Can you say amen? Give God praise. Glory to God. Isn't God good? I'm glad I came to church this morning. Hallelujah. You had to come. Yep. And I'm glad I did. Glory to God. You know, right here, I want to tell you that there is a fear that grips your life. And what it's done to you is it's caused you to choose and to choose at times the wrong direction. The wrong direction is something that you have been familiar with. It's the familiarity where you find the comfort. But God says, I want to pull you out of this. I am the Redeemer. And He has power to do such a miracle in your life, brother. God stepped in at a critical time. You were thinking thoughts of destruction. But it was God who said no. And he stepped in 
and he did a miracle. He interfered with the destruction. And he says, I want to tell you something. I stepped in front of the bullet that was headed your way. Just like he went to the cross for you. He said, I stepped in front of it. And he said, I'm going to tell you, trust me. Just trust me. If you'll trust him, there'll be an acceleration in your faith, a growth, a development. It'll be amazing. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Let's give him praise. There's several people here this morning. You're dealing with pain. I'm going to name them. When I name them, I want you to raise your hand. God's going to move supernaturally. He's going to heal sickness this morning. There's someone here that's been dealing with pain in your elbows and it's shooting pain up into your shoulders at times, but it's primarily in the elbow area. Who is that this morning? In Jesus' name. God's going to do a miracle right here. You believe that? Right here. Hallelujah. Someone in the overflow room. I can't see you, but I believe you're there. There's also someone here that's been dealing with pain, excruciating pain at times in your feet. Mostly in the right, but it also comes into the left foot as well. God wants to heal that this morning. Who is that? In Jesus' name. God's going to do a miracle here. God's going to do a miracle here. Who else this morning? In the back. God's going to do a miracle here. There's also someone here that's been dealing with issues in your vision. It has an effect on your sinuses as well. God wants to touch your eyes this morning. Who is that? Right here and right here. Right back here. Right back here, in Jesus' name. There's someone here that's been having difficulty breathing. God wants to do a miracle and touch you in your lungs this morning. Who is that? In Jesus' name. God's going to touch you, sister. God's going to touch you. There's someone here that's also been dealing with pain in your abdomen. It's shooting pain. It's not constant, but when it hits you, it is a shooting pain. And God wants to touch you this morning right here. A miracle. Right here. A miracle. Right here. A miracle. A word for you. Listen to me. Do not allow worry to dominate your mind. Worry is the dark room. Fear is the dark room where all of your negatives are developed. Worry complicates things for you. And I'm going to tell you, God's going to set you free this morning. You're going to get a miracle. Jesus' wonderful name. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Every person that I mentioned, I want you to stick your hand in the air. Every person, every person, every person, every person, every person... That's your antenna. Keep it up. God's going to heal. God's going to heal. How many believe that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever? How many believe that? He's the great physician. And you're going to believe with me as we speak the word of God that created the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh, who dwelt among us, He's here this morning to heal your body, the great physician, the healer. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Jesus, I'm so thankful that you're the healer. And right now, I'm asking for a creative miracle in my body. I'm taking dominion over fear rejection and self-hatred I break the curse of fear I take authority over COVID-19 and the power 
of darkness that moves through it. I rebuke all infirmity in my body. I'm healed because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive a miracle in my body. In Jesus' name, begin to praise God. Receive miracles. Receive miracles. Receive miracles. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Give Him praise. Receive healing in your bodies. Receive healing in your bodies. Healing power is present. Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. He is alive. Thank you, Jesus. For even now, I'm speaking. I'm speaking a word to you individually. Yes, and to you corporately as well. And it is here that I want to bring an assurance to you. For I am doing something powerful in your lives in this church. I am moving as I have promised. The weapons of the enemy have not prospered. And I assure you this morning, I am doing the miracles, the signs and wonders. You have read of them. You have anticipated them. This is the time of supernatural conquest for I am pouring out my spirit. Even now a fire is upon this work of God. A supernatural instrumentation of power that I have placed upon you individually and corporately. I have given you nations and people. I I assure you there's more to come but rise up and remember my words beloved church for this is the time of reviving and fruitfulness this is the time to believe for I am moving in your midst I have promised to do so and it will come to pass thus saith the Lord thy God (laughs) hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah! The signs and wonders of God's Word. Let's expect big this week. The miracles, the promises of God's Word. Jesus is present to heal. Pastor, if you would come, sir. Amen. Let's give God praise and thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's bow our heads. If you're in the overflow, bow your heads. Live streaming, bow your heads. And we want to pray. Go rejoicing. Tell someone what Jesus did for you in the service this morning. Test yourself whether you got healed or not. Tell someone what the Lord did for you. Let's gather back tonight. to Bring someone, if you can, that needs Jesus. Let someone know what God is doing at the door. Christian Fellowship, we're having miracle revival this week. Whatever your need, whatever your problem, Jesus has the answer. Amen. So let's meet together again, 5.30 this evening for prayer. Our service is at 6.30. Our heads are bowed. And I'm going to ask if Pastor Augie Herrera would close us in prayer. Go rejoicing. Take time to fellowship with one another. Remember, if you have children in... um, Sunday school, you can go get them. If you have children in nursery, you can go get them, and we will ask you to then leave, and then everyone else is going to wait here for a few minutes, and then we will leave as well. Amen. So let's bow our heads. Pastor, would you pray? Amen. God love you. Go rejoicing. We'll see you tonight.